Honorable Mohamed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Since the time is limited, let me try to go straight and dive into the subject. Uh, the Honorable Minister of Finance has used some very bizarre terminology in order to defend his bilan, qui est lamentable. And he starts by saying that c'est un badinage politique. He says, l'opposition ne reculera devant rien pour des gains politiques, tentative de créer un climat de, de, de tension, de doute. He talks, he says that they have a language of vérité and of solidarity. And he says that everything is to blame with, as my good friend, Honorable Minister of Labor, has just stated, everything is to put, uh, the fault is that of the international situation, and it is never the fault of government. What the both ministers and other members of government have to understand is that this motion of no confidence, I see them on the defensive. I see them trying to defend and as though they are taking hits. It is not a motion of no confidence personally against any one of them. It is collectively against government. So they don't have to be defensive and take it personally whenever we criticize what we believe to be wrong. There is no need to create enmity when we talk about subjects of national importance. There is no need for you to be so much on the defensive and keep on repetitively look in the rearview mirror. Because what I've seen the Honorable Minister of Finance do is systematically, together with Minister Kalichern, systematically talk about what they did in the past, what they did in the past, but they refuse and fail once again, lamentablement, to consider the fact that people outside of this chamber in hundreds and thousands are unhappy, unhappy with the performance of this government, unhappy with la légèreté avec laquelle they run les affaires du gouvernement, unhappy because of la cherté de la vie, unhappy because people still keep on traveling as ministers as though they have nothing else is difficult in this world. When it comes to people having to eat, when it comes to people, good friend, Honorable Kalichan says, government has subsidized and will be subsidizing almost 4 billion rupees. But when it comes to traveling for ministers, then ministers are not expected to open Bwatsajin and to eat in Dubai. Then ministers are not expected to economize and subsidize and travel economy. Then ministers are not expected to travel and take a taxi, but to take a Mercedes to be driven to the pavilion for Dubai, World Show and what, what not. This is what was said. At least the Trochinat, I bought it with my money, not taxpayers. Whereas the ministers traveling for this country, whereas people are suffering out there, what do the ministers do? Let's look at this document, 7th National Assembly, first session, report of the PAC. And I'm looking at that document that is part of our history today. And look at the hypocrisy, Mr. Speaker, sir. And I don't mean anything personal against members of government when I say that. But in that committee, there are four members from government side in there. In that committee, Honorable Navina Ramyad, Honorable Rajana Dalia, Dr. the Honorable Mohammed Ismail Rao, Honorable Rameswar Dulab. Those are members of this committee. And when the committee produces a report of this nature, this means that this committee, all the members thereon, collectively adopt that report and the contents of this report. And when this report says, for instance, and I say, I'll take one example. Your committee takes this very serious view at paragraph 2.1.2 of the representations made by the representatives of the ministries that they were executing instructions from their respective minister. When the Honorable Minister of Health is his fingers pointed at him. When the former Minister of Commerce 
Fingers are pointed at him. When they are blamed for what they've done, and those members of government, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, approve this report. Is this not therefore a motion of no confidence in the acts and doings of this government voted beforehand? Have they not already given their views when siding with this report that this government, mainly the culprit, Honorable Minister Jagat Pal, has he not failed lamentably when we look at this report? Those four members of government sitting only in front of him there, bring your hand down. Let do not interrupt me because it hurts. When those members of government, what is it? When those members of government, what is it you want to? It's hurting. Point of order. Yes, I have a point of order. The honourable member is imputing motives. At no point can he be of opinion that it was a blame. So I uh, want him to withdraw the fact that he said that it was a blame. It was not a blame. Your permission? No, no. Yes? There has been a point of order. Yes. I have listened. All right. Now I have to run. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is debate. And uh, Honorable Duval rightly said it may hurt. But the fact that the report has been adopted by the committee, even you call it that you adopted, you're against, but this is a fact. You have to accept it. Continue. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So what I'm saying here, when I look at that report, Mr. Speaker, sir, and when it says your committee notes with concern that hundreds of millions of rupees worth of contracts have been awarded during the COVID-19 pandemic without any record being kept as to who took the decision to award those contracts. Who were the ministers on that high-powered committee that approved such a mess? Why is the Minister of Health still in office? Why is the Prime Minister still tolerating such incompetence? Why is the Prime Minister turning a blind eye to the obvious? And why is it that the members of government who form part of that committee, who have sat in that committee, who have approved this report, why is it that they today will turn their backs against this report and vote with this government if this is not hypocrisy? Sir, what is it? If this is not turning a blind eye to one's conscience, what is it? Either you stand for good or you'd stand for bad. Do not sit on the fence because continuously sitting on the fence, you will get hurt. I will not go that far. <laughs> so, Mr. Speaker, sir, when I look at this pack and blister, the country today has suffered and is in blisters. But the Honorable Minister of Health still sits there and still pretends that there is no better person than him. His staff says to the committee that he gave instructions orally. His staff say that he violated procurement rules. His staff says that he kept no records and did not see to it that records were kept. That and he smiles. Look at his smirk. Look at his smiles. Don't be personal. Don't be personal. I shall therefore withdraw the fact that I say look at his smile. Let's not look at his smile. Let's refuse to look at his smile. Don't look at his face. Don't look at his face. I agree. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, you're right. You see, Mr. Speaker, sir, the difference, you know what is the difference between a politician and a leader? A politician is only interested in getting re-elected for the next elections. I am not. A leader is interested in sacrificing himself for the good of his country, not elections. And this is what we do on this side of the house. We sacrifice for our country. Whereas they, they are only interested in getting re-elected. La population mauricienne souffre. 
et le ministre des Finances pensent que c'est un badinage. Don't interrupt the member. And the Minister of Finance, what explanation is he going to give to the people out there? And I speak to those members of the PAC and I appeal to their conscience and I ask them not to be ashamed for what they decided in the committee, not to turn their backs like chameleons that try to adopt a different color because the bush they're in has changed for years. Do not try to wear camouflage and hide from the obvious. If you have agreed that therein lies problems as regards governance, I put it to you, Mr. Deputy, Mr. Speaker, sir. Why is it that we have to tolerate political and parliamentary hypocrisy in the face of suffering out there? And the Minister of Commerce, and I say a good friend, just like other friends as well. Let's not heal, feel the fingers pointing at him good friends on the other side no no he's also a good friend he's quite a funny one though but he's a good friend so when i look at this look at this explain to me something the real price of mogaso roji without any taxes 37 rupees 20 per liter the real price of gasoil without any taxes 38 rupees 96 le consommateur aujourd'hui il paye la TVA sur Mogas 8 roupies 80 par litre. Le consommateur sur gazoil paie 6 roupies 50 par litre. En plus, le consommateur, le badinage que le ministre des Finances pense qu'on fait, est obligé de payer 2 roupies par litre comme contribution pour les vaccins de Covid-19. Mais cela n'a pas empêché les chers ministres de l'autre côté de la Chambre de se parader devant la presse, de prendre des photos, que ce soit avec les représentants diplomatiques d'autres pays, pour vanter la capacité de leur cher Premier ministre de négocier des vaccins et de les obtenir gratuitement. Alors moi je me demande, Monsieur le Président, si on a pu obtenir des vaccins gratuitement, pourquoi alors ils sont en train de poignarder la population ou de vampiriser la population en suçant le sang jusqu'à la moelle de cette population, en nous volant de roupies par litre. Pourquoi alors le ministre du Commerce, l'honorable membre, n'a pas même pas eu l'audace d'expliquer aujourd'hui pourquoi le gouvernement ne considère pas comme justifié la réduction des taxes Pourquoi est-ce qu'on continue à payer de roupies par litre Pourquoi est-ce qu'on continue à contribuer autant de taxes et que le prix a presque même peut-être plus que doublé. La, le vrai prix est la moitié. In moments like this, you have to show solidarity. Le type de solidarité dont parle le ministre des Finances est simplement joli à entendre dans son français de Molière. Mais en réalité, ce n'est même pas la, un véritable, véritable enjeu politique, la moralité ou la solidarité, il nous vend une histoire qui est tout à fait fausse parce que la vérité est qu'aujourd'hui, on va, on va en discuter, ils vont défendre l'intérêt du gouvernement et puis ils vont tous dire « Aïe, 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 we, we, we are in the interest of government and government will win the day. » But out there, people are suffering. Out there, people are paying a heavy price. So, Mr. Speaker, sir, maybe I'll finish on this one sentence. I'll ask the Minister of Finance, who says that he is transparent and that he is honest politically, to at least reply how much did it cost government when the several ministers went to Dubai, because those two ministers, those two questions from Honorable Yutim and Honorable Juman, put on the 5th of the 5th of April 2022, he said he would reply, he has still not replied. So keep hiding, but we will find you. Thank you.